Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to solve this exercise for supply and demand. If you haven't attempted this problem already, it would be a good idea to stop the video now and do so, and then resume when you're done. I've gone ahead and written out our demand function, supply function, and parameter values. The first thing that we want to do is plug in those values to figure out what our supply and demand functions are just in terms of Px. I'll put 5 in for Py, and then I'll put 10 in for m. That's going to come out to 20 minus 2px. Over here on the supply side, we'll do the same thing and plug in 3 for pz. That will come out to px minus 1. To figure out the equilibrium price, we will set the quantity demanded equal to the quantity supplied. So what we'll have is 20 minus 2px equals px minus 1. I'll add 1 to both sides. At 21 minus 2px equals px. Add 2px to both sides. At 21 equals 3px. Divide both sides by 3, we'll get px is 7. I'll put an e on that to indicate that that is our equilibrium price. To get the equilibrium quantity, we're going to substitute 7 in for the price in either our demand function or supply function. They should come out the same. Let's try it with the demand function. So our equilibrium quantity will be 20 minus 2 times 7, which is 6. I can verify that by plugging 7 into our supply function as well. We'll get 7 minus 1, which is also 6. The next thing we'll do is draw a graph of this market. Label my price and quantity axes. Let's draw the demand function first. The easiest way to do this is to simply figure out what the intercepts for our demand function are. For the intercept on the price axis, we know that quantity is 0. So if we set 0 equal to 20 minus 2 px, we can see that px would have to be 10. That tells us that the intercept is going to be 10. Now if we plug in 0 for the price in the demand function, then we simply get 20 and that tells us that our quantity intercept down here is going to be 20. Now I will simply connect these and that's going to be our demand curve. I'll use blue for demand. For the supply curve, note that our price intercept is also where quantity is 0. So I'll set px minus 1 equal to 0 and of course we can see that px would have to be 1. So our intercept happens right here. For the supply curve, of course, we have an upward sloping curve. I'll draw that in with red. It's going to look something like this. Where these two curves cross is going to be our equilibrium. And then I'll mark that off on the graph as well. We know that our equilibrium price is 7, and we know that our equilibrium quantity is 6. Next I'll draw in areas for our consumer and producer surplus. The consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve and above the price. So that's going to be this triangle right here. The producer surplus is the area under the price but above the supply curve. So the producer surplus is going to be this area right here. To calculate the consumer and producer surplus, we note that these are triangles. So the area is 1 half base times height. For the consumer surplus, we have 1 half a base of 6 and a height of 10 minus 7, of course is 3, which comes out to an area of 9. For the producer surplus, again we have 1 half base times height. The base is 6, the height is 7 minus 1, which is 6. And what we get is an area 
of 18. The last thing that we'll do here is calculate the own price elasticity of demand at the equilibrium. The definition of the own price elasticity of demand is the partial of the demand with respect to the price of x times price of x divided by the quantity of x. To get the partial derivative of the demand curve with respect to price, we'll go back to the original demand curve right here. Notice that there's only one term in here that has a px in it, and that's this one right here. That means the derivative of the rest of this is just zero, and so we just take the derivative of negative 2px with respect to px, which of course is negative 2. Multiply that by px over qx. Since we're at the equilibrium, we know what px and qx are. We solved for those earlier. Our px is going to be 7, and our qx is going to be 6. So what we get is negative 2 times 7 over 6, which is negative 7 thirds. Since the absolute value of negative 7 thirds, 7 thirds, is bigger than 1, then we can conclude that our demand curve is elastic at the equilibrium. And this problem is now complete. We have solved for an equilibrium, calculated consumer and producer surplus, and then e elasticity. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.